Greetings class, this is Dr. York Hammonds and I'm providing information from Chapter 6, Section 4, where we are trying to find confidence intervals for variance and standard deviation. Now we have a new distribution for finding confidence intervals for variance. And that distribution is called the chi-squared distribution. And when you look at it, it looks like a kind of a, a scripted X with squared, but that is the chi-squared distribution. They want a right-hand limit and a left-hand limit for a confidence, uh, for the given confidence level C, in this case, C equals 0.95. And our sample size is n. In this case, we have 19. Now, notice uh, that when you come to stat, when we're in stat crunch and you do stat and you click on calculators, that we see several of these calculators we've used, in bef used before, like we use the binomial, uh, but you see chi-square. So we're going to use the chi-square uh, the chi-square calculator for that particular type of distribution. We're going to use the between tab because we want a right and left hand boundary. So we'll get one, our number here will be the left hand and our number here will be the right hand. Now the first thing it asks for is the degrees of freedom. Now the degrees of freedom is n minus one or one less than your sample size. So if our sample size is 19, one less than that would be 18. So my degrees of freedom here are 18. Now the area under the curve that I'm looking for is determined by my confidence level C, 0 0.95. So I type that area and that will that red shaded area will represent 0.95 in terms of what uh, percent of the curve is colored or shaded in red. So when I click compute, you can see there's a very large amount of the circle, 95% or 0 0.95. And this occurs between two numbers, 8.2307. You can see that's less than the 10 here on the left. And 31.5264, just a little bit over 30 right here on the right. So this one wants the right hand boundary first. The one on the right is 31.5264, but we only want three decimal places. So that would be 31.526 rounded to three decimal places. Then it wants you to give the left hand boundary also rounded to three decimal places. So that would be 8.23 and that zero becomes a one because of this seven beside it. So that's 8.231. We'll check our answer. And so we've completed the work uh, for this particular problem. Now, I just wanted to remind you that when we want to find critical values, for the confidence level C, we go to the chi-square calculator and it will give us the left boundary and the right boundary for the chi-squared distribution values. These are your critical values of chi-squared using the chi-square calculator. Now our next question isn't looking for critical values of the chi-squared uh, distribution. It wants us to find a confidence interval for the population variance sigma squared and the population standard deviation sigma. And assume, this is important, that the sample is taken from a normally distributed population. We can use this, the chi-squared distribution if we know that the population is normally distributed. So we're going to go to stat. And in, in chapter six, we view at 6.1, we did Z stats. In 6.2, we did T stats. In 6.3, we did the proportion stats. So in 6.4, we're at the variance stats. We're finding a confidence interval for the variance. Now, uh, this is a one sample uh, variance, 
and we have a summary. They gave us the standard deviation and the sample size. So the sample variance, which is S squared, is 17.64. And the sample size, N, is 29. Now, we're not performing a hypothesis test here. We are trying to find a confidence interval for the variance. So be sure that you click the radial button for confidence interval. Now, the level of confidence is the value of C. In this case, C is equal to 0 0.95. Well, that's nice because that's the, that's the default confidence level, 0 0.95. Now I'm going to have it store in the data table in case I need to do another one later. So I'm going to click Compute and then I'm going to close the options box and it says that the limit on the left or the lower limit is 11.109114 and the upper limit or the one on the right is 32.265776. But we don't need all those decimal places. My stat lab says round it to two decimal places. So this would be 11.11 for the lower limit. And for the upper limit, 32.27. So let's check our limits and see if those came out right. And that's fine. So I just want you to uh, recognize that we did, I'm going to go back through this one more time, we went to stat, proportion stats, one sample with summary. That's how we got the information to find the confidence interval. Now the interesting thing about this is it wants us to find the confidence interval for the population standard deviation. Well, Remember back in chapter two that they told us that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So I can go to uh, data and compute an expression and I'm going to build it and all I'm going to do is take the square root SQRT of 11.11 .11 And I'll compute that, and it says that it is, it's been added to the table, 3.333, so to two decimal places, that would be 3.33. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to compute an expression. I'm going to build it. And if you don't want to type square root, it is down here near the bottom under the S's. Do you see SQRT? Here you have to double click it. I just typed it. It was, to me, that was easy enough. And I'm going to take the square root of 32.27 for my upper limit. 32.27 for my upper limit. And compute. And it added it to my data table. And you can see that that's 5.68. And that 0 means the 8 is going to stay the same. So 5.68. And let's check our answer. And sure enough, it was OK. So you use the chi-square, uh, go to stat, and use the, excuse me, proportion stat, one sample with summary, to find the confidence interval first. Then you take the square root of the lower limit after you round it, be sure you take the square root of the rounded variable value, 11.11, 11, 11 .11, and the 32.27. Please don't use the uh, full digits here or you'll be off enough that it could count it wrong over here in my stat lab. Um, every once in a while, they will ask us to use uh, data. So I'm going to pause for a second and find one that has data. So I found a problem, 6.4.14-T, 6 uh, that actually gives you a list of data. Um, it says you randomly select and measure the contents of 10 bottles of cough syrup. 
the results in fluid ounces are shown to the right. So here are your 10 bottles and the number of fluid ounces uh, of cough syrup. Again, it's important that you know that the sample was taken from a normally distributed population. That's the only reason we get to use the, chi, uh, the variance test for chi-squared. It wants us to construct a 99% confidence interval for the population variance and the population standard deviation. I'm going to open a new data table because I need to take this data and copy and paste it into StatCrunch. So you see, click on the little icons. I'm going to copy to clipboard because that's what you'll have to do for your exam. I'm going to do Control C to copy and then I'm going to come over to VAR1 in the little box row 1 and I'm going to do Control V to paste. So now we have all the data that was in the problem, 6.4.14-T, and now we've got it in StatCrunch. So we can still go and do the same thing we did in the previous problem, stat, pro, uh, variance stats, because we're trying to find the confidence interval for the variance, one sample, but this time it's with data, not uh, a summary. Now the data is in VAR1, so we have to select it. We're not performing a hypothesis test. I want a confidence interval, and it needs to be a 99%. So 99% would be 0 0.99. Oops, I'm sorry, 0 0.99. I'm going to store that in the data table and compute. I'm going to close the option box, and you can see that the lower limit is 0 0.00039835. And notice over here that, they, that my stat lab wants us to round that to six decimal places. So that would be 0 0.000398. And that three to the right of the eight leaves us with an eight. So the left boundary or lower boundary, 0 0.000398, and then the upper boundary. 0 0.005416 and the 2 that comes after it leaves the 6. So I have 0 0.005416 and that's the confidence interval. What that means is that I am 99% confident that the true population variance sigma squared is between these two values, 0 0.000398 and 0 0.005416. So your interpretation uh, would be that with 99% confidence, it can be said that the population variance is between point zero zero zero. 398 and 0.005416. Now it wants us to find the confidence interval for the population standard deviation. So just like before, you take the square root of each one of those. So I'm going to go to data, compute, expression, build my expression. I'm just going to type it SQRT of the, I'm just going to do the lower limit, so I don't, oh, nope, I don't want to do the lower limit. I have to use the rounded value. I'm so sorry. 0 .0, 0 0.000398 and take the square root. And then I need to repeat that for the upper limit, data, compute, expression, build, SQRT for square root and 0 0.005416, close your parentheses, and compute. So you can see that for the lower limit for the population standard deviation to four decimal places, 0, 1, 9, 9, 4, so it's 0 0.0199.
and then the right hand limit is 0 0.07359 or 0 0.0736.